Welcome to a new chordal lesson, but just before starting, I want to tell you that my chords program will close its doors in three days, May 19th. Uh, I have decided that I wanted to come back to a open close method for my course because it's it's much easier to manage for me. Uh, I'm going to treat it as a university curriculum. So from now on, it's going to be fall, winter and summer semester. So I'm going to close my doors to my course program for my summer semester in three days. So if you are considering, please click in the link in the description box to see if the course program suits you. Now back to the lesson, I'm going to teach you what are mu major chords. And I know you are intrigued by the name because I was when I first discovered it, but it's the signature uh, voicing chord from the band Steely Dan, which is a jazz rock band from the 70s. And basically they created that kind of voicing and that kind of chord because they wanted a richer sounding chord without being too jazzy with too much extensions. So basically a mu major chord is a regular chord of a, fir a root, third and fifth, but we are going to add a second interval inside of it. So instead of one, three, five, it's one, two, three, five. And it sounds a lot less jazz than it would be with all the extensions. So, for example, this is the same C major chord that I would play on a mu major chord, but with all the extensions, it sounds jazzier. But with a mu major chord, it sounds like this. So it's less jazz than having but it still has a rich quality to it because of the the added second and the friction that it can have with the major third so usually to uh, get started on mu major chords we take uh, the open chords that we know and we identify the root note that is doubled inside the chord because yes, in every open position that you know, the root note is doubled at least one time. So for example, if we take a E major chord, in fact, in this one, we have three times the note E. We have the open sixth, the fourth, and the open first. So we are going to identify where it is doubled at first. So the first uh, place where it is doubled is the fourth string. And we are going to higher it by a whole step. So it's going to be on the fourth fret fourth string. So instead of having a E major like this, we're going to have an E major like this. Do you hear the difference? And the mu major chord, regular, mu major. Beautiful voicings. Uh, a lot of the times when you want to fret a mu major chord, you have to use your pinky a lot because you have to uh, replace one note two frets above or two frets higher. So it's going to enlarge the fret span that you need to fret with your hand. So you're going to use your pinky a lot and it's going to be kind of a stretch most of the times. So uh, another example would be to take a E, uh, A major, sorry, chord, A major chord. And we are going to find once again where the root note is doubled. So we have the A, on the fifth string, but we have the third string, which is also an A. So we are going to replace that note with our pinky here two frets higher. And this is our mu major voicing for A major. Same thing we can do with a D major. The D is repeated on the second string. So we are going to replace two frets higher and it does this voicing. 
we can do it with other open strings. Uh, let's say I take a C major. The C is repeated here on the second string, so I have to higher it. You see the pattern, two frets above. So this would be our mu major on C major. On a G major, we can do it too. If we do a stripped down version of G major, we could play it like this. So the third fret on the sixth string, we skip the fifth string, and then everything is open, and we replay the G note on the first string, third fret. It's still a complete chord because we have our, usually our third is here, but instead we play it as the open second string. This is the same note, this is B. So this is a complete chord. So if we want our mu major chord, we have to add the second note from a G major, which is A. So we are going to fret it here. So this is our mu major on G. So you see, we can do it almost everywhere with our open position, open chords that we know. But what if I want, let's say, a B flat mu major chord? I cannot play it open like this. We can extract open position or bar position with our open positions. So let's say that I take our example of an E mu major like this. It's a bit of a stretch, but we can bar it and do the same shape with our remaining fingers. Uh, I recommend that you do not do it on the first fret because it's very, very stretchy, but you can uh, practice it, let's say from the ninth fret. So it would do a uh, voicing like this. It was the example that I played at the beginning like this. So in that case here, it would be our B flat mu major chord. We can do it with the simple position that I showed you from G2. This one, if we forget about repeating the G on top, we have this simple two, two fingers pattern. This one, we could uh, bar it, so that would do something like this. This one is a lot easier to fret than the big one, like this. It sounds as good to me. So it's a very, very nice voicing to avoid sounding jazz, but to have richer sounding voicings. Uh, on piano, it's either e even easier than guitar. You just have to play the first three notes of your scale as a cluster, and it's going to make your mu major chord. Uh, some people say that it's the same thing as having an add two or add nine chord, uh, like we saw in the episode from um, add nine power chords. And it is true, but most of the times we are going to aim to put the second or the ninth inside our voicing. If we put it uh, on top, it's going to sound jazzier and it's not going to have the friction, like I said, between uh, the second and the major third. And that's the uh, typical sound of Steely Dan to have that kind of friction inside the chord and re we really hear it with uh, voicings like this. Because the notes are very close together and they are not spread out. Hope you're going to have fun with new major chords that you just learned. Once again, go click in the description box to uh, go see if the chords program suits you. It's going to close for four months after May 19th. So you should act fast if you were thinking about it since a long time. It's a really, really great program. It's been approved. People loved it, students loved it. I have so great testimonials. So if you like my lessons, please consider it. It's top class. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, au revoir.